from the Digital Media Production Studios at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. This is Hawk's Eye View, an interesting look at interesting things on an interesting campus. Now here's today's host, Camille Little. Hi, I'm Camille Little, and welcome to Hawk's Eye View. And today we are talking to Dr. Barry Gaines, who teaches history here at UMES. Dr. Barry Gaines, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, Camille. I'm very excited to be here. So, what are you here for today? I know, right? <laughs> so, I have this story and I wanted to tell you. Yes. So, this little tiny book is a play. Mm -hmm. And this play um, was written by someone I know who's actually right here on WhatsApp. This is him. And he, um, this play, written and published and read in Uganda, mm -hmm. which is in East Africa on um, near Kenya, near Tanzania. Um, people are reading this in Uganda and they're reading it in Rwanda, which is a little country near Uganda. And it has a UMES connection. Mm. So right? what's a UMES connection? All right, see, yeah. now that's the story. <laughs> so the UMES connection is quite amazing. So this, 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 this is the author, Yusuf Serenkoma. Mm. And the reason I know Yusuf, say hi to the people, Yusuf. Hi, everybody. <laughs> author right here, in the flesh. So he's in Germany right now. He's a... What are you, some kind of professor or something? But anyway, when I, I, the reason I know Yusuf is because he edited my book that I published with Fountain Publishers in Uganda. I'm a mm -hmm. historian of Africa, and so I, I've written two books that, have, that were published with the publisher that he works for. Mm -hmm. And I met him. He's a very interesting person. He's, like, lively and energetic and really smart and funny and, and really easy to work with. And so while we're working together, he said, I wrote a play for a competition for the BBC. You know what the BBC is? Mm -hmm. the, British, so, um, the British Broadcasting Company. So right. he wrote this a play for them, just like as a competition. They always have these little competitions. Okay. Well, you didn't win, right? No. No. So it's called, didn't it didn't win. But I read it. Mm -hmm. It's called The Snake Farmers. And I was like, this is a great, this is great. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to use this in my classes. You know, I teach African history. So I was like, I was teaching this class. I was going to be teaching this class about aid in Africa and the problems of aid to Africa. And I was like, this is perfect. I'm going to use it. And he's like, what? I said, yeah, we're going to do your play in my class. He's like, get mm. out. So we did, right? Do you remember what was your reaction when I told you that? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's all full of life today. Normally he's more fun. Yeah. But um, so he, so... So then we did it, came back, did it, performed it in what they used to have, Discover UMES, like in the PAC or something. I think it was in those days, it was in the PAC. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was great. It was my class. and we had, It was really, really interesting. And they got a lot out of it. And it was amazing. Well, next thing you know, I could look at the date. When did you publish this? Next thing you know, he says to me, it's a book now. Mm. And I was like, what? And he gave me this book. He even signed it. You could see the sign from the, from the author, right? When did you publish this? 2015. Yeah, so four years later, he mm -hmm. publishes this book as a, in, in Fountain Publishers in Uganda, right? And I'm like, oh, good for you, yay. So I think, okay, that's it, right? And then, and he gave me a copy, et cetera, I, you know. Then like a couple of weeks ago, I'm talking to him, and he said, oh, by the way, this book, this play has become required reading in schools in Uganda and some schools in Rwanda. That's awesome. I was like, what? Right? You're not helping. You're not being bubbly. <laughs> yeah. Normally he's... Because you're telling the story so well. Okay. Yeah, you have it. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. and I'm like, what? So I Google it, you know, because mm -hmm. you got to Google it, right? And I'm talking to him and I'm Googling. I'm like, you know, this book is on some serious syllabi. Like, mm -hmm. it's on syllabi that have, like, classics, you know, like mm -hmm. Ngugi Wationgo and Moliere and who else? Shakespeare. Like, then there's the snake farmers. Mm hmm I mean, this book is getting, it's like becoming a classic, right? I'm like, you're just a goofball. Why, how could you write it? I mean, you just, what are you, right? He writes this play. It's a miracle. UMES performs it. He's like, hmm, maybe it's a good play. He gets it published. It becomes required reading. Turns out also, now here's the big part. In the book itself, when a student reads this in Rwanda or Uganda, the, the first page in, no, not the first page in, like, ah, right before act one. There's the original cast list from UMES. Wow, okay. So it says, cast list at the premiere at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore Studios, 2011. Every kid who's reading this in Rwanda or Uganda reads that. And That's then they insane. read our students. Right. 
Ivy Matthews, Kamadin Daiga, Stephanie Terry, Jesus Hernandez, Clifford Glover, who, by the way, is a full partner in a law firm right now, Mm -hmm. Um, Aston Blunt and Kenji uh, Kenji Mosley, Um, Leroy Myers, who, by the way, now is a PhD in history. I mean, they read these and and they always, what do they ask you about these names when they see this? Well, uh, it's, it's tradition for plays. Yeah, but the yeah. students who read it always ask you, like, who are these people, right? And normally they just need the tradition. There have to be some people at the end of the book who first acted in the... Yeah, I know why it's in the book. What I'm asking you is why do the, stu- the students also ask you, like, when they read this play, they ask you, who are these, who are these people, right? Uh, no, I've not met that question before. Oh, I thought that's they, what you told me. I've met that, but that's not one of them. Because they know it's routine. Every time oh, you okay. open up there, you're going to find a list of names that for people you may never so know. I took this, so I took so. this story... Yeah, you're not that much fun today. I'm going to put you down. Yeah, he's not the greatest guest. In, in, in real life, you're a blast. On TV, you're a dud. Anyway, so um, he, he's just like, you're pausing. And, oh, no, this is tradition. Well, although that the story itself didn't win in this contest, it seems like it's won in your heart, and you've brought it back to your class. What exactly well, about the story okay, now made you want to? Okay, excellent point. Yeah. See, she's good. That's a good question. <laughs> So the reason why I like this story, the reason why we did this story, and the reason it's a classic, Mm -hmm. is here's the basic premise. It's called The Snake Farmers. The premise is, in some unnamed village, in some unnamed country, in some unnamed part of Africa, Mm -hmm. it's it's an allegory, it's not a history, it's not real. Mm -hmm. He made it up. Is uh, a village that gets overrun by snakes. Right? Snakes everywhere. Snakes on the plain. Snakes everywhere, right? Well... Because white people are as they are, white people hear about it on BBC and they're like, oh my gosh, we have to help Africa, right? Because that's what white people do. They always help Africa. So they summon up all this aid for the snakes, the snake village, right? And they, they pour all this aid into this village and people start getting new pots and pans and mm-hmm. like, you know, people start building better houses like, hmm. We need more snakes. Right. <laughs> so they become snake farmers to continue the crisis mm. so that the aid will continue to come in. Am I telling this story well? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. it's a perfect allegory for the problem of aid. Okay. Once you start giving it, people are like, this is nice. Mm-hmm. We got to keep this crisis going. We got to keep this war going. Mm-hmm. We got to keep this poverty going. We got to keep this disaster going because the aid will keep coming in from the white folks who feel so bad for Africans. Right. Meanwhile, it's the Africans that are really running the show, which is what mm-hmm. makes it so great. The white people are kind of the fools, you know, because mm-hmm. it's like white, the, the, the Africans are kind of like, we might have something here. Right. So it's like kind of turning history on its head. It seems it's exactly. like it's 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 the perspective is shifted from the aiders to those who are involved. And the people who get aided mm-hmm. in Africa are usually seen as victims, mm-hmm. are usually seen as powerless, are usually seen as exactly. sad and pitiful, with the big stomachs and the flies in their face. This is the opposite. This is people meeting in rooms going, how can we keep this thing? This is a very different way of seeing African people because it's written by an actual guy from Uganda who's an actual African person and um, is not tricked into stereotypes. So it's it's brilliant, it's short, it's genius, and it is becoming a classic. And UMES is on the fourth page. Well, thank you for coming on our show. This seems like a very interesting story. And thank you to all the viewers. And thank you, Youssef, our, the author of the story. Um, and thank you to our, our watchers um, for Hawkside View. And thank you for joining us. I'm Camille Little.